I have been waiting for this since the day we said we were gonna buy the rig. Welcome back to Miller's In Motion. Today is a day I've been waiting for for a very long time. We've officially got our grill smoker thing. Back at the house, I had a Camp Chef Woodwind 36 with a sidekick sear box, pizza oven, you name it. Loved it. I mean, I absolutely loved this thing. It was my favorite tool to cook with, and if you haven't figured it out by now, I enjoy cooking and eating. Um, but when we got on the rig, I said, I want to find something. I looked at Traeger. I looked at a bunch. I uh, actually talked for about 15 minutes with Corey from Finding Our Someday at the Tampa show about it and why he bought the Green Mountain Grill versus this. And he had mentioned this one, and I had already had a Camp Chef product, and by far that was the best pellet smoke I ever bought. So today we're going to unbox, do some stuff, and then in a, in a few days, same video for you guys, we're going to actually smoke a brisket. Um, but we have the Camp Chef Pursuit 20, which is the one with the foldable legs. So let's get it out of the box and do the burn in and kind of see what this thing's about. So this is the Camp Chef Pursuit 20. It's a mobile version. And as you saw me setting it up, those legs fold underneath it. You actually get a little bit of handle and you can drag it around. That's what I absolutely love about this thing is it's portable. So we're done doing the burn in. We are gonna cook on it tonight with just some hamburgers and I can't not smoke something. So it, it, tomorrow, essentially, we're going to go ahead and do more than likely a brisket but i mean this thing like i said i had the woodwind 36 with sidekick before and i loved it but this is nice and portable it's so far seems like the same camp chef quality which makes it amazing but i mean everything i loved about the woodwind i love about this um so let me show you why oh couple things that I love the most about it is one the controller it's just great and this is the new one that's for the mobile version um, it just does a really really good job but if we open this up so the burn-ins happen um, I don't know that I'm gonna keep the uppers I mean I'll keep them but I, they don't I don't use them very often so might not but I love that you can line that with foil pretty easily take that off you can clean everything um, it's hard to see under there but if you look you know, it's like nails on a chalkboard, but um, the heat plate that sits over the firebox, I can move out of the way. So if I'm grilling burgers or something, I need to get a little more heat uh, and or direct heat, I can move that out of the way and get it up on top of there. Um, other things that just kind of make it easy, there's a handle here, the hopper. I mean, it just, it, it sounds dumb, but it's, it's simple to use. Now on this unit, there is, you can see where it gets a little hot right in there. Um, instead of having a smokestack because it's a portable unit, it has vents in the back. And the drip tray, there is a release right here, so there's a little hole, um, essentially right here. And uh, your, your drip canister, just under your drip cup, essentially just clips right there. And that's the simplicity of the Camp Chef Pursuit 20. But what's important is I actually have some height, so I can legitimately do a brisket, which is what we're going to do soon. Good morning. It's a few days later. Uh, I intended on actually doing the brisket right after the grill the next day, but in the chaos that is our lives, something came up, and so we didn't get to do that, unfortunately. So um, I did go buy the brisket, which is right here. Um, you know, something you have to take into consideration is the size of your brisket, given something like this. If you're going to do a brisket, pork butts, all that other stuff, really everything's going to fit perfectly fine. Um, spoiler, we did do hamburgers on last night and I burned the crap out of them. So, uh, that was a whoopsie slash my bad. Um, but, uh, we are originally from Fort Worth, Texas. And so to me, barbecue is beef. It's not pork, it's beef. I'm Texas and we do a hill country style, which is just a lot of salt and pepper. Um, but I'll show you how I do one and then we'll test out the smoker doing a brisket. Cause if it can't do a brisket, is it really a smoker? That's the biggest question. So. Uh, I'm not going to put you through watching all of this, but uh, I do need to get the brisket unpacked. 
Uh, and then I, how I do this in the order I'm doing it is how we how I roll. It is also very early in the morning. Um, my briskets have a tendency to take a while. They're close to 10 hours, give or take, um, from start to finish. So, yeah, that's where we're at. So, uh, first things first, I buy a whole packer brisket. This is, happens to be a Prime 1 brisket from HEB uh, outside of Weatherford. So, we are... Uh, it needs to be trimmed still, uh, and I haven't even gotten the, the smoker back out or anything, but because I want to get the seasoning in this so it can sit for a little while in it here. And while that's going on, we'll go get the grill. So I guess fast forward to me slicing and dicing fat off of this thing. So as you can hear, the dogs are now moving around. Um, so a couple of things. Uh, when I'm trimming a brisket, you know, the, the, the lean side or the meat side, um, there's typically some silver skin and some things like that. I take all that off as much as possible. Uh, and then any really, really thick, hard pieces of fat, cause it's not going to render the fat cap side. This one's actually a little thin. Um, so this area, this area is called the point or the flat. This area is called the point. Uh, it's two different muscles that kind of overlay each other. The points a much fattier, uh, cut. So there's more marbling throughout the flat is a much leaner cut. So I like to leave a little bit of a fat cap on this side. There's two different ways to smoke it, and we'll talk about it when we get it out there. Um, but when I season, again, we have to go get the grill <laughs> and get it set up still. Um, but typically, and I don't use this seasoning specifically, but I like to use a whole lot of uh, our buddy Matt Pittman's Meat Church stuff. Uh, this is probably the best all-around seasoning. This is the Holy Voodoo. This is the one I use. We normally use a combination of... Uh, the Holy Gospel, which is a salt, pepper, garlic mix of some kind, um, and a few other things. Another one that I really like is this Hardcore Carnivore Black. Um, this is, I call it the cheater rub. Uh, it makes it look like you have a really, really dark um, bark on the outside of your brisket. So uh, with a pellet grill, it helps out a little bit. And then this is just Clean's S&P Blend. This is literally just kosher salt and coarse brown or coarse black pepper. That's it. Um, again, we like to cook stuff in Texas Hill Country style, so it's a little peppery. Um, so what I do is I do a very light coating of this, uh, just to kind of give it a little bit of set Texas Hill Country flavor. Not hitting it hard at all. This one we go a little more liberally. The smoke doesn't come into a brisket quite the same as it would like chicken or fish or beef, and so it, it doesn't get real far. So. We really go, I go very liberal on my main seasoning. Normally I'd go from a lot higher up just to kind of get a good spread on it, but to be honest, it's getting everywhere in the rig. So this is sea salt, garlic, sugar, black pepper, chili powder, onion powder, and some activated charcoal, uh, which is why it has that funky black shape. So here's the deal. Some people use a binder, some people won't. I don't on beef, it sweats enough. But what I do is I will leave this sit this way. I've not seasoned the other side. So this is the fat cap side. Um, I will season this and then I will let it sit for about 15 minutes and I'll flip it. And then I'll season the other side, let it sit for 15 minutes. And in the meantime, I'm gonna wash my hands. Excuse me, babe. All right, I'm gonna let that sit. Uh, before I flip it, let's go ahead and go get the smoker out uh, and get it set up. And then by then we'll be able to flip this season and then we got to go start the smoker, which takes another hour. All right, so we're gonna let this go ahead and start up and get warmed up. Let's go back inside and flip the brisket and get the other side seasoned real quick. We're gonna go ahead and get it on. Uh, also, what I've noticed, and this is just you and your smoker, you gotta figure this out. Um, this side seems to be a little hotter than this side. Uh, so the fat, the point being thicker, we're going to put that on the hotter side. And I brought a napkin out for that reason. Um, 
so it does fit. It is close. Uh, <laughs> that's the absolute largest I could probably do. Uh, and I still would rather have more room. All right, I just got back from running a few errands. Uh, in a future video, you're gonna see that uh, Lawrence truck had to go in for service. Um, that's a, one of many things that are broken right now. But uh, when I got back, I wanted to double check a few things real quick. So let's go check the brisket. All right, so we are sitting at 158 degrees internal uh, temperature of the brisket. Uh, I did go ahead and reset the the temperature to 225, so it's in the process of heating back up. Um, but one of the things I want to look for, so there she is. Ain't she pretty? Um, I'm looking for bark. See how it's starting to jiggle? That's a good sign. Um, but that bark is setting up nice. Not a lot's coming off of my hand. Uh, you can see, obviously, like most things, as it cooks, that kind of starts to pop out. But it's looking really, really good. So we're going to leave it for a little bit. Um, I have been, as we go, adding more pellets. So that's something on a grill this size you just have to do on something you're smoking a little bit longer. But the grill as a whole has been phenomenal. It works very similar to my old, um, my old Camp Chef Woodwind, which is what I love about it. I think it looks good, it's clean, it's simple. It's not very complicated at all. Um, and it's doing a great job so far, especially for such a large brisket on such a small surface. That was something I was a little concerned about. Another thing too that people complain about is you don't see smoke pillowing out of the Camp Chef. I promise you there's smoke. It is, it cleans a very, it burns a very clean smoke and therefore it's not going to have a ton of color to it, but I promise when we cut into it, there should be, I say that, I shouldn't have said that, but uh, there should be like a little smoke ring and, and everything else. So uh, it's bunking along. So like I said, it's at 225. We're going to hopefully get it up to about 165 uh, and then we're going to wrap it in some butcher paper uh, and then put it back on and we might go up to 250. And then when it gets to about 200 degrees, uh, we'll probe check it. So we're looking for the probe to go in, and I'll explain more about that later. Uh, and then it'll sit until it's done, essentially, and it'll rest for a few hours. And that's what's going to be for dinner and a few other dinners down the road, and I'll explain what we do with that. But the grill so far is working like a champ. Couldn't be happier. All right, back for another check here. So we are at 176. Ooh, she's looking good. So she's still climbing up there in temperature. So this is the question. Do we want to wrap it or not? All right, sorry, we're down here so I can show you, but uh, what I wrap with uh, is this uh, butcher paper. So it's kitchen use butcher paper. Uh, you can wrap meat in it. There's not a wax film on it like there sometimes is. Um, don't just grab any pink paper if you're gonna do that. I prefer this because it allows it to breathe just a little bit. There is another way and that's with foil. You can do foil. I don't like it because it doesn't breathe as much. So you end up essentially boiling the meat a little bit in its own juices. Uh, that's also called the Texas crutch if you're curious. So um, I, I don't like it. I think that it, it, when, when it, you get all those juices inside of the foil, it, um, it kind of kills your bark. And so this is a way of saving the bark and, and still doing, um, getting the smoke through. So let's, um, let's grab the brisket out. Okay, that was very hot. Like, very, very hot. So, that goes back on, and we need to get our meat probe back into it. Again, kind of the same thing, you want to go and start the point. Let's want to check it, see what we're getting up to. Yeah, so something to think about too, if you are going to try and do a Texas brisket, um, it was at 174 before, it just got back up there. It gets to about four or five degree blow. When you pull it out to wrap it, it's going to drop its temperature. And now it's not. So we're back right at 174, so it held pretty good. But now we're wrapped up. Um, at this point, depending on what time it is, it's almost three o'clock and we still want this to rest for a little bit, so. All right, sorry, the AC's on, but I forgot about this for a minute. It was resting, I got excited, so I went ahead and unwrapped it and brought it inside. Also, Lauren's home. Hi. And fighting a thing of Bush's beans. I know how to work a can opener, but this one doesn't work, I promise. It's stupid. It's stupid. So, anyway, there is... Uh, also, our neighbor was smoking chicken thighs, 
and brought over something with barbecue jelly glaze on it. So I'm actually excited to try that. All right, like I said, I kind of ripped everything away. We'll go back out and talk about the grill. I know what this is really about, but these are hard to do and I'm excited about it because I'm, well, you know, uh, I'm way more excited about barbecue than Lauren ever is going to be, but I appreciate that she at least lets me do it. Um, so, it just as my quick little barbecue side, um, remember how we talked about two points, there's the flat and the point, or the two cuts of meat, um, there's the flat and the point, there's a little piece of fat running between them, so this is still the point, this is still the flat. If you're going to slice it, please, for the love of everything, when you go to slice it, the grain runs like this. So you want to slice against the grain, that's what makes it tender, or not. So, uh, With that being said though, I normally separate the two right here so that I can slice them differently. Um, yeah, so let's dive into it. I don't know if you can see that or not, Lauren. That's pretty juicy. That's it's like bleeding juice. All right. I know you didn't see Laura in this video, so I'm sorry. I mean, I guess she was briefly in it. <laughs> yeah, she's behind the camera now, but she was at work all day while I smoked this today. Um, but I'm hungry. This looks really, really good. I want to eat dinner. So thank you guys so much for watching. I know it was a different video, but really, really soon we got some fun stuff coming up that I can't wait to share with you. Uh, so until then, we'll see you next Sunday as always. And um, bye, Mom. We're going to do a brisket swipe. Now my wheels in motion and my window. Open with the way